the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for sending us King Jesus, the Savior of our souls, the King of kings and Lord of lords, the Alpha and the Omega, the everlasting God. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. We glorify you, O oh Lord, and we just say hallelujah. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that leads us and guides us into all truth. Thank you for cleansing us from all unrighteousness. Thank you for purchasing, purchasing us with your precious blood. Lord, here we are ready to receive a word from you. Make things clear to our minds, make things clear to our souls so that we can be edified, built up, encouraged, strengthened with all might so that our cup will not only be full, but it will also run over. Teach us great and mighty things that we do not know and may thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We know that you're about to come, so may we always continue to watch and pray so that we will be accounted worthy to escape all the things that are about to come on the earth and stand before the Son of Man. We love you. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, thank you for coming back to another teaching installment of When the Temple in Heaven is Open. Everything will change. And today I just wanted to go over a couple things because I was led to a couple videos from a couple uh, fellow brothers in Christ. Uh, uh, Brother James out there, thank you for leading me to uh, watch that video um, that I'm about to share with you guys. And uh, my brother, uh, Many Fish, um, also inspired me to look at something. And I want to play their videos uh, uh, to, to paint the picture because they did a real good job. And it's all about recognizing the times that we are living in because... Everything is playing out right on schedule, and it's going in accordance with what was already written. As the Bible tells us, history just merely repeats itself. There's nothing new done under the sun. And so we see the same type of events playing out in our days that were playing out in the days of old, in the Old Testament. And it's interesting because now... Um, the story is about to change, okay? The chapter is about to change, and we're about to go into a new chapter. And for those who are ready, that new chapter will be uh, life from the dead, glorified bodies seeing King Jesus face to face. And we will be in his presence in the Father's house. But for those who aren't ready, when the chapter changes, it's going to be a terrible time. And so understanding the times that we are living in, I believe that we should be aware of what's going on so that we can know what to do. And so here we see this picture of Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 8, where idolatry was being practiced by the nation of Israel. We see that this upper picture was where they were burning incense um, to foreign gods who were no gods at all. And then we see over here that there was women weeping for Tammuz. And then we see here that um, the people were having their backs towards uh, the altar. Not the altar, I mean, the, the, uh, yeah, well, the altar and the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah, they had their backs away from the temple and they were facing uh, the sun. Uh, they were facing the sun with their backs toward the temple, and they were praying to um, Lucifer. Um, and so we see that um, these same type of things are happening in our day under the cover of darkness, just like uh, when it was happening in Ezekiel's day under the cover of darkness. But God, who knows all, sees all, understands all, uh, saw it all and brought Ezekiel um, in a vision to see the great abominations that the people of Israel were committing. And so 
this vision that Ezekiel was given in Ezekiel chapter 8 is also a vision of the end times. That's the point. This is a vision of the end times. And that's the picture that I pray that the Holy Spirit will bring out in this teaching. Because this is a repeat of what's going to happen in our days. And so I want to play a couple of videos so we can paint this picture because um, this vision that Ezekiel got, this vision that he got in Ezekiel 8 continues all the way until Ezekiel chapter 11 when the glory of the Lord departs from the temple. But because this vision is God speaking on multiple levels, this is a vision of what's going to happen on the cloudy day. That's the point. This is a vision of what is going to happen on the cloudy day. This is a vision of when the glory of the God of Israel comes down. Uh, as we see here in Ezekiel 8, chapter 4, uh, Ezekiel declares that, Behold, the glory of the God of Israel was there, according to the vision that I saw in the plain. So, in this vision that Ezekiel sees here it's the same vision that he saw in Ezekiel chapter 1 when he saw the heavens open okay he was uh he looked up verse 4 chapter 1 and I looked and behold a whirlwind came out of the north a great cloud and a fire enfolding itself and a brightness was about it and out of the mist thereof as the color of amber out of the mist of fire also out of the mist thereof came the likeness of four living creatures so this is God coming on the cherubims. This is God coming on the clouds. And we see that down here in verse 22. And the likeness of the firmament upon the heads of the living creatures was as the color of the terrible crystal stretched forth over their heads above. The terrible crystal, the terrible crystal is the sea of glass, which separates um, God's abode from, uh, you know, uh, this universe. Uh, that sea of glass is, is uh, that firmament. And on the firmament sits uh, the throne of God. Uh, verse 23, And under the firmament were their wings straight, the one toward the other. Every one had two which covered on this side, and every one had two which covered on that side, their bodies. And when they went, I heard the noise of their wings like the noise of great waters, as the voice of the Almighty, the voice of speech, as the noise of an host. When they stood, they let down their wings and there was a voice from the firmament that was over their heads when they stood and had let down their wings. And above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne, as the appearance of a sapphire stone. And upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness of, as the appearance of a man above upon it. And I saw as the color of amber, as the appearance of fire round about within it, from the appearance of his loins even upward, and from the appearance of his loins even downward, I saw as it were the appearance of fire. And it had brightness round about, as the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain. So was the appearance of the brightness round about. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell upon my face, and I heard a voice of one that spake. So this vision that Ezekiel saw in chapter 1, he says this is the same vision that he sees here in Ezekiel chapter 8. Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 4, And behold, the glory of the God of Israel was there, according to the vision that I saw on the plain. So as we just read in chapter 1, that's God coming on the clouds of heaven with the cherubim carrying his throne. So this is going to be a picture, a vision of the rapture. And so there's a whole lot to this. It's just so deep. It's just so amazing. And so I want to play a couple of videos um, to paint the picture. And the first one I want to play is the one that James uh, Gromley, um, forgive me if I said your last name wrong, but uh, my my mighty man, my mighty uh, brother in Christ, mighty man of God, he pointed me to this video right here, uh, given by Informed Christians. And this was their latest video, and he does a wonderful job of telling us how the chapter is about to change. And the chapter is about to change because of the signs in the heavens. And uh, the next chapter that comes is the chapter of Scorpio, the chapter of the scorpion. And we know that the scorpion represents Satan. And so uh, he's going to explain what's going on in the heavens and how this chapter is going to change on 
August 16th. August 16th, 2018, the chapter will change, which connects us to the date given in Ezekiel 8 when he saw this vision that came to pass in the sixth year, in the sixth month, on the fifth day of the month. Okay, so the sixth month is the is the month of Elul, and the fifth day of the month uh, corresponds in our day to um, the fifth day uh, of the sixth month, Elul, corresponds to the 16th of August, 2018. Okay, and this that date, the 16th of August, 2018, is the same date when um, the sign in the heaven shows that there's going to come a change. There's going to come a change in the story. And this also corresponds with what's going on on the earth with the biggest album in the world right now is from hip hop artist Drake, whose album called Scorpion, his album called Scorpion is number one on the Billboard 200 charts for the fifth straight week. Drake has the number one album for the fifth straight week. And the name of his album is called Scorpion. <laughs> you just can't make this up if you try. You just can't make it up. And so there's a whole lot going on. So let me just play this video so you can um, see how the chapter is about to change. It's going to play for about maybe five or six minutes. Um, because we're all working together. We're all in this together as the body of Christ so that we can come to a proper understanding of what is about to happen because Ezekiel chapter 8 through 11 tells us exactly what's about to happen. Uh, so let's go. So where we find ourselves right now, Jupiter was recently at Station 2 on July 10th, and now it's been heading toward the left, but it's not quite to that first star yet, the first star associated with the claw. Not till August 16th will it be directly in line with that first star. That doesn't mean anything's going to be happening necessarily on that day. All we know is by that date is when the celestial heavens, particularly Jupiter, will be drawing attention to that phase of the celestial heavens along the line. It's going to be at that spot which we would associate with that part of the story, which is Scorpius at that point. And here's just a quick video where you can see what Jupiter's been doing recently and how it's about to get there, but it's not quite there yet. We're still in a little window of time right now. Now it's been raining a lot here, so I've been able to get a recent picture, but here's one from July 26th of Jupiter there on the lower right. And so you can see it's been approaching the stars associated with Libra, the altar as it's more properly known as, and then off to the left is Scorpius. And with the understanding that the two claws went all the way to those prominent stars on the right in Libra. And so that's where Jupiter is heading toward now. And we've seen it go through Leo the line and tell the story there. And which immediately segued into Virgo, the Virgin. We've seen that story and then go through Libra, the altar. And so now when we see it getting ready to go to the next constellation, we know that's going to be telling the next story that is associated with that constellation. So we know the story is about to change celestially which tells the time, and we know the time when we know the signs. Now, Scorpius is very interesting, particularly in light of celestial signs that we have recently seen already, because the heart of the Scorpion is Antares, a bright red star, and it's been long known as the Scorpion's heart. It stands out in the night sky. You can definitely see it, and it's definitely red, the themes of red. But Antares is interesting, just the name, because in Greek it's Antares, which means not Aries are like Aries, or the rival of Mars. And if you remember the Greek name of Mars, that was Aries. And so Antares, the heart of the scorpion, is literally like Mars, but it's not Mars. They look the same. That's the implication of the meaning there. It can look like Mars, but it's not Mars. It's the rival of Mars. And so this has really caught my attention when we have recently seen Mars, which is Aries, shining the brightest on July 31st, just a few days ago. Resonating, in a sense, with this celestial sign and how we see the chapters about to change, with Jupiter, the main actor, about to draw attention that another king is about to come onto the earthly scene, the son of perdition. We see Mars at its brightest, and then the rival of Mars, Antares, also being drawn attention to it just by connection and where the celestial heavens are getting ready to point to. This definitely catches my attention, what we've seen recently, warning us and reminding us of what is about to happen. 
And so we have some significant celestial events going on right now, time to time, telling us that the chapter is about to change. And all we know for sure is that Jupiter is going to be at the first stars of Libra, which is the right claw of Scorpius, on August 16th. That's all we can say. We can't say anything definitive about a day or hour. But we can look at the time and we can say, yes, it does appear that the time is the time of expectation that we are told about, the summer time, and that also the time of the vineyard harvest is about to start as well which goes with the tribulation time. Now, when we look down... Okay, so uh, there's a whole lot to this video, so I pray that you would see this video for yourself if you haven't seen it yet because it's very powerful. But the point is that, as he said, the story is about to change because Jupiter is about to go to uh, the first star in Libra, which is also associated with the claw of Scorpion, the constellation Scorpion. And Scorpion, of course, represents Satan, the power of the wicked one. And it happens on August the 16th, 2018. August the 16th, 2018, on our Hebrew uh, date calendar, is going to take us to the 5th of Elul. Okay, the 5th of Elul is the same date that Ezekiel saw his vision thousands of years ago. He saw it in the sixth year, in the sixth month, on the fifth day of the month. Okay, and he saw all these wicked abominations that were taking place. And that's where plenty of fish, I mean, not plenty, I'm sorry, <laughs> many of fish, uh, many fish is going to uh, pick up uh, the story uh, because I want him to uh, explain what he saw. And then I'm going to, Lord willing, the Holy Spirit is going to come in and I'm going to tie some other things in together because God is telling us the story of what comes next once this chapter changes. And remember, on the earth, uh, the number one album in all of the world is from the hip-hop artist Drake, and it's for the fifth straight week. He has the number one album, and the name of his album is called Scorpion. Okay, you, you just can't make this up. You can't make this up. Okay, you can't make it up, but we're living it out. And, and but watch what watch it what what many fish is about to say because wow he put some stuff together look at this I'm gonna play this for about five minutes because he's gonna make some connections with Ezekiel eight uh, praise the Lord the thing that came into my head was last week when the stone fell out of the wall and created a hole in the wall right that's the first thing that came into my mind I can't help it and. It, a hole in the wall, and then I look at wall, look at it. it's H723, right? A wall as built in a trench. Mason, just like I was looking at uh, Huckabee building the wall with the trowel in his hand, okay? But that's not it. It's H7023, 723. And the stone fell out of the wall on 723, which this stuff is just like connecting like that, right? Then he said unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I digged in the wall, behold, a door. And he said unto me, Go in, behold the wicked abominations that they do there. Now the door could mean a bunch of things too. I mean, I envision it as uh, a door into a secret synagogue is what I call it because what, I what I'm going to show you shows that. He went in and he saw all the abominations, the beasts, and the idols, right, portrayed upon the wall. And there stood before them 70 men of the ancients of the house of Israel, okay? That's where I got to bring this up. From last December, the new synagogue under the Western Wall, okay? Now... <laughs> I've done videos on this, but this is this is too much, really. You, you see this little inner circle here? I, I have images of this, like better ones here. Okay, that's the ark. That's what they call that. This little inner circle right here, believe it or not, has 70 seats. You can count them yourself if you like. Uh, and stood before them 70 men of the ancients of the house of Israel. And in the midst of them stood, stood Jezaniah, the son of Shephan. Shephan, as in hiding, probably a kuni. It means secretively. If you if you look into the uh, 
into the deeper meaning of it here. See, it's to conceal like a valuable, a treasure, okay, a rock rabbit, coney, okay, and that even goes further too, but I digress. So we got the hole in the wall, we go in, we get through the door, and we see the uh, the secret place where the 70 ancients have gathered together, right? And this, this all took place on December the 19th of 2017. Okay, that's that's when this took place. The the dedication of this synagogue, right? Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's read on. And he said to me, Son of Man, has a scene with the ancients of the house of oh, I forgot a verse here. And there stood before the seventy ancients of the son of Shephan, the hidden secret, with every man his censer. Okay, his little smudge pot in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. Well, at the very same time, and I'm talking about the very same night, that they were dedicating this synagogue under the west wall, under the temple, they were also doing a very interesting thing outside of the temple. They were, for the first time, in 2,000 years, and people got to just grasp the, the spiritual meaning of this. I mean, this is like a literal thing they did for the first time in 2,000 years. Burned incense in the temple prescribed manner for the first time. And this article is dated December 21st, 2017. Now, they did the actual burning of the incense on the Tuesday prior to that, the very same night that they dedicated the synagogue under the west wall of the temple. Okay, this is just crazy. The fact that this occurred on the 19th and that this article was not posted until the 21st in an Israeli newspaper, mind you, uh, is very telling because it also has a great deal to do with this winter solstice, okay? I'm just trying to show you how this stuff came to me. And uh, then he said unto me, Son of man, what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark, every man in the chambers of his imagery, for they say, The Lord seeth us not. The Lord hath forsaken the earth. And he said to me, Turn ye that yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. And he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which is toward the north. And behold, there sat the women weeping for Tammuz. Okay? Then he said unto me, Hast thou seen this old man? Turn thee yet again, and you shall see even greater abominations. And he brought me to the inner court of the Lord's house. And behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, about five and twenty men, with their backs toward the temple of the Lord, and their faces toward the east. And they worshipped the sun toward the east. Okay, when is that generally done other than on the solstices? Okay, so this all kind of folds together. Okay, and it's just, I'm telling you, it's there. And it means something. I'm just not sure what. I know we're in our, you know, calendar eighth month. And that this is uh, Ezekiel 8, right? So that's something. So I asked one more time, I just asked the Lord, I do, and I just say, can you show me, Father, something that would verify that I'm on the right track? I'm not just running off some rabbit hole, okay? And so I pull another random Bible verse, and it's Psalm 8, 1. Praise the Lord. So I want to stop there, but I want to share now what putting these pieces together what the Lord has showed me because many fish has brought the beautiful picture together as well as informed Christian to let us know that the story is about to change on 
the fifth of Elul. Um, the fifth of Elul, which will be uh, Thursday, the 16th of August, 2018. And many fish put together all these things that were happening in our days that happened in the days of Ezekiel. And when Ezekiel saw this, he saw that um, the glory of the God of Israel was there because he had been taken in a vision to see it. And so the point of this is that God is telling us that this vision is a vision of the rapture. Okay, and that's the point. And look at the connections that God has shown. Uh, because the next chapter, the next chapter, because God has come to visit. Okay, God has come. Um, he's come out of heaven uh, on the clouds. As, he, as Ezekiel said, this was the same vision that he saw in Ezekiel 1. When he came in the whirlwind, God came down on the planet in the whirlwind. And so he's, he's coming to inspect. He's coming to look for fruit. He's coming to judge. Okay, and then look what goes on in the next chapter in Ezekiel chapter 9. And, and, and Because this is all the same vision until we get to uh, Ezekiel chapter 11. And so God sees all these wicked abominations going on. Okay, he saw the wicked abominations going on in Ezekiel's day. And then many fish brought out all the wicked abominations that had been going on in the dark in our days. And so this is what God's judgment will be. Uh, verse 1, he cried also in my ears with a loud voice saying, cause them that have charge over the city to draw near, even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lies towards the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. And one man among them was clothed with linen, with a rider's inkhorn by his side. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. And the glory of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherub whereupon he was, to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the rider's inkhorn by his side. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that are done in the midst thereof. And to the others he said in mine hearing, Go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Okay, so I'm going to stop here to, to draw out some points. So Ezekiel sees seven people. He sees uh, six people with slaughter weapons in their hand, and then he sees one clothed in a white linen with a, a rider's inkhorn by his side. These seven people who Ezekiel saw are, the, are related to the seven seals of Revelation. Okay, we know that there are seven seals in Revelation. Seven seals in Revelation, and we know in Revelation 7 that nothing, none of those seals can be broken. None of these uh, uh, first four horses can ride uh, until um, the 144,000 are sealed. Okay, and we see this in Revelation 7. After this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth to prevent any wind from blowing on the land or on the sea, or on any tree. Then I saw another angel coming up from the east, having the seal of the living God. He called out in a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm the land and the sea. Do not harm the land, or the sea, or the trees, until we have put a seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. Okay, so here in Revelation, we see that no harm could come to the land, or the sea, or the trees, until a seal is put on the foreheads of the servants of our God. The same thing that Ezekiel said he saw. He saw the man with the rider's inkhorn by his side going through the midst of Jerusalem, setting a mark upon the foreheads of all the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that are done in the midst thereof. Now watch this. You see, because Ezekiel said that this happened in the sixth month, okay, in the fifth day of the month, in the sixth year. And so we know that the sixth month is the month of Elul. And the month of Elul is the month of repentance. So uh, Ezekiel says that he, he, he saw uh, God order um, the man with the rider's inkhorn to go into the midst of Jerusalem. This is verse 4, Ezekiel chapter 9. And 
set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that are done in the midst thereof. So he's saying, mark out all those who have shown uh, repentance, okay? He's saying, uh, set apart all those who are repenting, okay, during uh, the month of Elul. Because remember, this is going on in the sixth month, okay? And we are currently uh, heading towards um, the sixth month uh, in our days. Um, uh, and the sixth month is known as the month of Elul, which is, let me just read this, the month of Elul is the month set apart for repentance, or Teshuvah, in spiritual preparation for the high holy days, i.e. Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. The season of Teshuvah runs 40 days from the first of Elul to Yom Kippur. Each day, the shofar is sounded, we appeal to the Lord for the gift of genuine repentance in our lives. The last 10 days of this 40-day period, beginning on Rosh Hashanah and ending on Yom Kippur, are referred to as the High Holy Days or Days of Awe. Okay, so uh, this, is, this, is, this is just amazing. Okay, so uh, Ezekiel sees the vision in the sixth month taking place, the sixth, uh, the sixth year, the sixth month on the fifth day. And so uh, in the same vision, he sees that um, God is going to mark out all those people who are doing Teshuvah, like the month of Elul is all about, the month of repentance. And uh, for 40 days, the people have a chance to repent. And during the month of Elul, the shofar is blown every day except on Shabbat. Let me read this for you. Um, the sounding of the shofar. Beginning on Rosh Kadesh Elul and continuing until the day before Rosh Hashanah, it is customary to blow the shofar, ram's horn, every day except for Shabbat. This practice was adopted to awaken us to the coming high holidays. Okay, so we see that the shofar is to be sounded during this time of repentance. And look at what Joel chapter 2 tells us, because this also ties in. Uh, Joel chapter 2 is talking about the coming judgment. And the first verse of Joel chapter 2 says this, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great peace people and a strong, there hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. I don't want to go uh, any further, but let me jump down here because the trumpet, I'm focusing on the trumpet. Uh, look, look here. Okay, so verse 12. Now, this is God telling the people to repent. Repent. It's the month of Elul. Verse 12. Therefore also now saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. Okay, it's the month of Elul. And rend your heart and not your garments and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness and repenteth him of the evil. Who knoweth if he will return and repent? and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. Here goes the trumpet again. Verse 15, Joel chapter 2, blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breast. Look at this, let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priest, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar and let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and give not your heritage to reproach that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, where is their God? Okay, so this is just so amazing. So we see that God has called uh, for the blowing of two trumpets, okay? He starts off in verse 1, Joel chapter 2, with blowing the trumpet. And then we see the trumpet blowing again in 
um, Joel chapter 2, verse 15, and God is telling the people to come together, assemble everybody. He's even telling the bridegroom to go forth, okay? The bridegroom is Jesus, and he's telling the bride to come out of her closet. Come, all those who are ready, escape from this terrible time that is coming, because the day of the Lord is coming. It's a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness. There hath never been ever the like, okay? Because uh, this this day is a terrible day, okay? But God is saying, we still have a chance to repent. We still have a chance to turn to him. We still have a chance to fast and to weep and to mourn. And that's what the month of Elul is all about. It's all about teshuvah. It's all about fasting. It's all about drawing near to God uh, so that uh, he will draw near to us. And we see that's what's going on in Ezekiel chapter 9. Ezekiel chapter 9 um, God tells um, the man with the rider's ink on his side to set a mark upon the foreheads of all those who are sighing and crying. All those who are doing what Joel chapter 2 tells us. Uh, they're repenting. They're doing Teshuvah. It's the month of Elul. Okay? And at this time, um, the bridegroom is supposed to go forth out of his chamber and the bride is going to come out of her closet. Okay? The, the rapture of the church happens at this time. Uh, uh, whenever uh, God says, uh, you know, judgment is going to begin, okay? But judgment will not begin until um, those who are sealed with the mark upon their foreheads are sealed, like Revelation chapter 7, 12, uh, 7 tells us, okay? Because this, this is the New Testament application, okay? No harm can come on the earth, okay? Uh, the, the four angels who are standing at the four corners of the earth are the four cherubim who surround the throne of God. God says, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Okay, uh, Ezekiel chapter one says he saw the vision of the four cherubim coming. He, they came like a whirlwind out of the north. It, it was a great cloud and there was a fire enfolding itself and brightness was about, about it. And in the midst thereof, as the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire came the four living creatures. The four living creatures have four faces and they take the throne of God wherever he wills. Uh, they don't turn when they move and they have the wheels inside of the wheels. Um, the four uh, cherubim are the ones who we see here who are standing at the four corners of the earth because um, God is everywhere. Uh, and they're holding back the four winds from coming on the earth. The four winds cannot come on the earth until um, the angel who comes from the east with the seal of the living God um, marks the servants of God on their foreheads. Okay, and we know that um, the four winds are uh, these first four seals, okay, uh, the four horses, okay, that go in the four directions, as Zechariah tells us, they come out between the two mountains, and, and, they, uh, and, they, and they go out um, to do uh, judgment, but they can't go out until uh, the servants of God are sealed on their foreheads, okay, and that's why we see here in Ezekiel 9 that there's seven people, uh, okay, there, there's six people who are, who are sent to slaughter, and then there's the one with the rider's ink horn, which represents uh, King Jesus. Okay, he's the one um, who's going to uh, come with the sixth seal. When the sixth seal is broken, that's when Jesus comes. Uh, and uh, when the sixth seal comes, uh, that's when Jesus comes on the clouds and he comes to get us, those who are ready. Um, when the bridegroom comes and the bride goes out of her chamber. Okay, and so we see that. Once those um, people are sealed here in Ezekiel chapter 9, then the six men who have um, the slaughter weapons in their hand, they go through the midst of the city of Jerusalem and they slay everyone. Look at verse 6. Um, slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women. But come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. And he said unto them, Defile the house and fill the course with the slain. Go ye forth. And they went forth and slew in the city. And it came to pass while they were slain them and I was left that I fell upon my face and cried and said, Ah, Lord God, will you destroy all the residue of Israel in your pouring out of your fury upon Jerusalem? 
Then said he unto me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceeding great, and the land is full of blood, and the city full of perverseness. For they say, The Lord hath forsaken the earth, and the Lord seeth not. And as for me also, my eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense their way upon their head. And behold, the man clothed with linen, which had the inkhorn by his side, reported the matter, saying, I have done as thou hast commanded me. Okay, so we see that once um, those who are sealed are sealed, the judgment comes. Okay, the judgment comes, but it's also, um, remember, God is also coming on the clouds. So there's also a judgment of hailstones and coals of fire. That's why the vision continues in the next chapter, Ezekiel chapter 10. Uh, look at this. Then I looked and behold, in the firmament that was above the head of the cherubims, there appeared over them, as it were, a sapphire stone as the appearance of the likeness of a throne. And he spoke unto the man clothed with linen and said, go in between the wheels, even under the cherub and fill your hand with coals of fire from between the cherubims and scatter them over the city. And he went in in my sight. OK, so um, the man who sealed um, all those who were sighing and crying over the wicked abominations is the same one who also takes the coals of fire and scatters them over the city of Jerusalem. So it's a double destruction. Okay, just like um, all the other prophetic uh, pictures tell us, even in the book of Revelation, when Jesus Christ comes on the clouds, there's going to come hailstones and coals of fire. Okay, raining down upon the planet. Uh, Revelation chapter 11, uh, verse 19. Uh, then God's temple in heaven was open. When the temple in heaven is open, God comes down on the clouds. And within his temple was seen the ark of his covenant. And there came flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, an earthquake, and a severe hailstorm. Okay, so uh, in Ezekiel, um, when this is all happening in conjunction with everything that is happening in this whole vision, the scattering of the hailstones is happening at the same time when the six uh, men are slaying everyone in the city. This represents Gog and Magog, okay, because Gog and Magog also happened on this day. Okay, we see this in um, Ezekiel uh, 38. Ezekiel 38 is when Gog and Magog happens, and that's when the hailstones come. Uh, because remember, um, there's great destruction that's going to come from the north. Okay, uh, verse 5, Persia, Cush, and Put will be with them, all with shields and helmets. Also Gomer with all its troops, and Beth Togarma from the far north with all its troops. The many nations with you. Uh, get ready, be prepared, you and all the hordes gathered about you and take command of them. Okay, they're going to come from the north. Just as um, in Ezekiel, um, these uh, uh, the six men came from the higher gate, verse 2, Ezekiel 9. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lieth toward the north. Okay, the destruction comes from the north. Okay, upon Israel, just like Ezekiel 38, the attack comes from the north. They're on the north border right now. Persia, that's, of course, Iran. Meshach and Tubal, the leader is Gog. Okay, that's Russia. Okay, Turkey. Okay, many peoples with them. Look, the Bible says this, many nations are with them. Okay, remember Iran said that there's a... Um, uh, there's an alliance of Muslim nations waiting for the order to attack, okay, and they're going to come, And but this is what happens when they try to come, okay, when they come, there's going to be a lot of slaughter, though, we read in Ezekiel 9, there's lots of slaughter, men, women, children, okay, maids, slay utterly everyone that does not have the mark, there's going to be many dead bodies in every place, and you think if God is going to pour out his fury upon Jerusalem that uh, the rest of the world is not going to get it? Okay, this is the cloudy day. Okay, th look at this. Joel chapter 2. This is a day of darkness and of gloominess. A day of clouds and of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, there hath not been ever the like neither shall be any more 
after it, even to the years of many generations. Okay, this is the evil day. Jesus Christ said of this day that there was no time like it before, and there will never be a time like it again. It's the most terrible time in human history. Okay, this is the cloudy day. Okay, Ezekiel, uh, when this happened, uh, when well, this didn't happen yet. I mean, this is a vision. Uh, this vision, uh, this never happened. There was never hailstones scattered over um, Jerusalem. There was never hail. Well, there was back in Joshua's day, but that was in Israel. It wasn't in Jerusalem. Um, but and this was in Joshua happened before Ezekiel. Okay, uh, you know Joshua's long day. Um, but here, this is Ezekiel. He's seeing a vision of the end. This is when the rapture happens, when the glory of the Lord comes and the bridegroom comes and the bride goes out of her chamber and we're caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Hallelujah. We're going to meet him in the clouds and we're going to be above all this destruction. This is the day of sudden destruction. My goodness. Okay. In verse two, and he spoke unto the man clothed with linen and said, go in between the wheels, even under the cherub and fill your hand with coals of fire from between the cherubims and scatter them over the city. And he went in in my sight. Okay. So uh, the hailstones and the coals of fire are going to be scattered over the city. And it goes in conjunction with all the destruction that comes from the six people uh, who had the slaughter weapons in their hands. The six people represent the six seals. Well, it's, all, it's actually seven people altogether. It's the whole seven seals. The whole seven seals is open. My goodness, this is the day of sudden destruction. Okay, the whole seven sealed scroll is open on this day. The whole heavens will shake and the whole earth will shake on this day. Okay, but let me get back to Ezekiel 38 because here we see the hailstones come. Okay, when Gog and Magog come to attack. Okay, verse 17, this is what the sovereign Lord says. You are the one I spoke of in former days by my servants, the prophets of Israel. At that time, they prophesied for years that I would bring you against them. This is what will happen in that day when Gog attacks the land of Israel. My hot anger will be aroused, declares the sovereign Lord. In my zeal and fiery wrath, I declare that at that time there shall be a great earthquake in the land of Israel. The fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the beast of the field, every creature that moves along the ground, and all the people on the face of the earth will tremble at my presence. The mountains will be overtoned, uh, the cliffs will crumble, and every wall will fall to the ground. And I will summon a sword against Gog on all my mountains, declares the sovereign Lord. Every man's sword will be against his brother. I will execute judgment on him with plague and bloodshed. I will pour down torrents of rain, hailstones and burning sofa on him and on his troops and on the many nations with him. And so I will show my greatness and my holiness, and I will make myself known in the sight of many nations. Then they will know that I am the Lord. Okay, so we see where the hailstones come. When Ezekiel saw the vision, he saw the man with the rider's inkhorn go in between the cherub. And he took coals of fire and he um, scattered them over the city. OK, this is King Jesus. OK, King Jesus, he's going to scatter uh, the hailstones because the hailstones come when he comes. The Bible says in Psalm 18, when uh, when he utters his voice. OK, remember, he comes with a shout. OK, uh, remember when Jesus comes in First Thessalonians, chapter four, he comes with the shout. Uh, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God, uh, the shout, um, the first thing that happens is the hailstones and coals of fire. Verse 9, Psalm 18, he bowed the heavens also and came down and darkness was under his feet. And he rode upon a cherub and did fly. Yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place. His pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. At the brightness that was before him, his thick clouds passed. Hailstone 
wounds and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the highest gave his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. Okay, it's the cloudy day, my friends. And so uh, we see that Ezekiel sees a vision of the event. This is uh, the vision of the event. And um, when Ezekiel sees this vision, uh, it, it goes all the way up until uh, Ezekiel chapter 11, uh, verse 25. Then I spake unto them of the captivity of all the things that the Lord had showed me. Uh, verse 24 says, so the vision that I had seen went up from me. Okay, so the vision continues, but I'm going to end this teaching because there's just so much. I mean, this is just scratching the surface. But Ezekiel chapter 8 to Ezekiel chapter 11, it begins, the vision begins on um, in the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month. Uh, many fish put together um, a wonderful teaching that told us that um, Israel is doing things in the dark, which directly parallel what God said he saw happen in Ezekiel's day. Okay, and we're coming up um, to the sixth month and the fifth day of the month. And uh, my, our brother in, from Informed Christians told us that the story in the heavens is going to change to the scorpion on that day. The sixth month, the fifth day of the month is going to be uh, Thursday, the 16th of August, 2018, when Jupiter goes into uh, the first star of Libra, which is connected with uh, the scorpion's claw. And we know on the earth, um, uh, the earthly sign from the powers of darkness is through um, the hip hop artist Drake and his number one album for the fifth straight week is titled Scorpion. Okay. This is all happening in conjunction with everything. Okay. It's all lining up. And, uh, we know that the sixth month is the month of Elul, the month of Teshuvah, where Joel chapter two tells us about blowing the trumpet. You blow the trumpet every day during the month of Elul leading up to Rosh Hashanah, and Rosh Hashanah this year happens on September 10th and September 11th, okay, and uh, the 40 days uh, of Teshuvah go all the way up until Yom Kippur, okay, so oh my goodness, it's just so much, <laughs> but we see everything working out just like God said it was going to work out, so we just got to continue to watch and pray, you know, uh, uh, look, look, let's, let, let, let's just continue to watch and pray. Okay. You know, maybe even, I was thinking maybe even on the sixth month, uh, uh, on the sixth day of the sixth month, which will be Shabbat, the 17th of August, 2018, which will be on, um, the sixth day, uh, on the Gregorian calendar in the year 2018, which is six plus six plus six. Okay, that you know, uh, there might even be, uh, you know, something that happens on the world scene um, where even, um, I don't know, you know, I don't know, I'm just watching and praying, you know, uh, I don't know what's going to happen on the 5th of Elul, I don't know what's going to happen on the 6th of it. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, you know, every day is just a gift from God, but I know I'm watching and praying, you know. This is high watch season. You know, everything is at the doors. You know, we see all the signs of the times. We still know that the peace plan is on the deck. And we know that the peace plan, whenever that gets released, it's going to be the final nail in the coffin. If it does get released, but I, I'm thinking it will be. Um, but, you know, if there's any language in that peace agreement, that peace deal, where the United States is telling Israel to give up land, to to, to part the land, to uh, give up any type of land, well, the curse comes. It's just, it's done. It's done. The curse comes. Um, the curse comes. That's, that's just, it, that's it. Okay. Uh, but, you know, there's just so much. Uh, you know, I want to say a whole lot more, but I'm in this teaching now because I, I'm pretty sure that was enough. 
God is good. I love you. If there's anyone out there who doesn't know you, King Jesus, all you have to do is come to him by faith. Confess with your mouth that he is Lord. Believe in your heart that he has risen from the dead and you shall be saved. For with the heart, uh, man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The time is short, the days are evil, and the day of salvation is now. Today, if you will hear his voice, today, if you will harden not your heart, today, if you will say yes, God will highly exalt you, for he gives grace unto the humble, hallelujah, but he resists the proud. Come to him today. Have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life and live forever. Your sins will be forgiven as far as the east is from the west, and like a thick cloud of the skies, God will blot out all of your sins. But you have to come. You have to say yes. I love you. God bless you. Our King is coming. Maranatha. Hallelujah.